Revolution. Myself, Sonali Soma Mukherjee, in front of you once more with another biology topic strictly restricted to zoology, phylum, echinodermata today. Of course, more topics will be coming which will not belong to the field of uh, zoology. So never be disheartened that only why zoology is coming in this channel, why not some other streams of biology. Biology is so vast that you can never end up with the topics. So today as I'm going to restrict myself to this phylum, phylum echinodermata. This phylum is basically all about the invertebrate species where a large number has been found to completely marine species these are found in the aquatic deeper waters, in the, in the lesser water, in the shallow waters also they have been found in all types of seas you find this uh, group of invertebrates and uh, this group of uh, animals you can see some of the significant features they have a skin which is very spiny so that's why the name has come from echinos means hedgehog and derma means skin phylum echinodermata here we find a large number of species the subphylums are also many we will be uh, concentrating on the classes crinoidea where we have uh, some of the very important examples such as the sea lilies then asteroidea familiar names such as the starfish also known as the sea stars then echinoidea in echinoidea we will be studying some basic example i'm giving of course that is the sea ocean ophuroidea where you find the name that is the brittle stars also known as the serpent stars as in the case of brittle star or serpent star rather the body structure is very similar to a starfish of course but similar i said not same that's uh, ophuroidea and lastly holothuroidea where we have sea, sea cucumbers which are having stems somewhat uh, 66 feet you can see this phylum uh, has been uh, found to have a body structure which is having a smaller range of 4 centimeters it can be of 4 centimeters to as large as 66 feet some of the sea cucumbers have been found to have a length of such a big structure so concentrating without wasting time let's move on to the salient features and of this group of animals that is phylum echinodermata let's talk about some of the salient features some of the basic features that you should know when you are studying this phylum look i have written down the points of course but there are many points yet to study so one by one i'm just going to explain the points that are uh, written on the board but later on there will be many other points which we will be covering in some later videos that that will be giving us the study of this phylum in detail the salient features first of all this uh, group of invertebrates it is completely marine and body is radially symmetrical now body radially symmetrical what does that mean suppose uh, a circle i draw a circle over here and from the circle I start uh, drawing uh, something like a sun or the projections of lines so this is the structure what I meant by a radially symmetrical bo body that the body will be uh, having a structure which is somewhat look, look like this a central point a circle a ring like structure and from there the projection of the arms usually from these arms there will be some uh, water filled canals will be there which will be linked these are the water uh, vascular system I'm talking about these canals are projecting to this uh, water filled canals which will be leading to the podia and this podia will be um, also we call it tube fit podia will be having some of the sucker system and uh, this system will help uh, this type of animal to uh, capture its prey also so in this case it will be uh, having this feature that is uh, this water filled canals that uh, link to the podia having sucker mechanism this mechanism also you can see in the cylinder at also you will be finding in jellyfish or Elia sp the same feature over here that is suckers sucker feature body is radially symmetrical though in the larval stage in the larval stage the body uh, will be bilaterally symmetrical look a body which is bilaterally symmetrical that means the left side and the right side will be looking similar if a dissection is done from the middle from midpoint longitudinally if I'm dissecting the animal I will I'll be able to see symmetrical halves similar looking halves from the left and the right end but in case of a radially symmetrical body you cannot dissect it in this way so you need 
to see it in a circular structure and in that case the top and the bottom will be uh, symmetrical but uh, in this case the left and the right is symmetrical usually in the echinodermata that is this phylum we find the species are having the larval stage is bilaterally symmetrical but the adult stage is radially symmetrical that's what is meant by radially symmetrical body then comes the point that is triploblastic look a triploblastic animal is that invertebrate uh, or multi among the multicellular uh, animals we call it triploblastic that means three layers of cells embryonic cells will be having three layers one outward that is the ectoderm one inward that is the endoderm and in between these two layers will be the mesoderm so that's what is meant by triploblastic in nature and then comes silome it's silomate silome means a body cavity which will be having a complete lining of peritoneum and this peritoneum is derived from the mesoderm so once you understand triploblastic that is ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm from the mesoderm only it will be deriving into peritoneum that will be lining up the body cavity silome silome means a body cavity of space you find this feature silome you will be finding two silomes that is u silomate also in case of annelids so sim there are some of the structures which you will be finding very similar so this is the first point the second is of course it's star fishes if we say it's very clean cut in our mind that it's going to be a star shaped body a star like appearance marine as i said earlier and spiny the derma that is the outer covering of the skin is having spiny appearance so that's what is meant by spiny skin then the uh, thing characteristic feature found in the echinoderms that is uh, all this uh, whenever i talk about echinodermata i always think about a little star or a sea urchin or a starfish you also try to imagine whenever you were studying this uh, subject in biology start your world of imagination i think that will be helping you to study more so let's go on to the topic now this is a uh, point that is water vascular system as i have explained that it will be branching on to some water filled canals say so suppose this is the central ring from here i am drawing the canal and these canals are filled with water let me write it to so that i can make you understand this is water filled canal that will lead to the podia this podia actually is the tube fit for locomotion that we say podia it has something a head like structure you can say that is the ampulla or ampulli whatever you say ampulla and this is the total structure of this podia now this structure will be helping this animal to draw in uh, to and it will be fitted with some suckers like sucker mechanism as i was talking about it this mechanism is helping the animal to uh, in other cases it helps the animal to attach itself to the host so in this case it is water vascular system which will be also known as ambulacral system we say which is situated in the ambulacral groove and this is helping the animal in not only uh, having a control over its prey but also helping it to survive in the uh, aquatic environment uh, for the madreporide is of course a perforated plate which is helping it to draw in water so in this case it is having some sucker like appendages we say tube fit which is helping it for locomotion so tube fit structure if you are thinking it's actually from here only from this central point it will branching on to some water filled canals which will lead to podia podia you can say tube fit so that's what the locomotion and about the water vascular system that we can think of then comes the next point that is the dermal skin has got some ossicles look these ossicles are some elements which are having calcium carbonate or calcareous you can see easy way to remember is it has got some calcium carbonate in it these are some of the elements which are embedded in the dermal region that's what the ossicles are meant about and uh, body is having calcareous plates and it is having a skeleton which is spiny skin then comes the nervous system which is diffused and attached to the epidermis there is no brain no excretory system found in the echinodermata then uh, circulatory system is open 
open circulatory system means what happens in human beings what the mechanism is simple way to understand our blood is not seen by everyone it's flowing within the blood vessels that is the arteries veins so in open circle in humans it is closed circulatory system just think about it if it is open the reverse process is taking place it's very much open to the environment so it's not enclosed with the arteries veins that's what is meant about uh, open circulatory system then power of regeneration that is if any part is lost it has the complete power by use of some amputation process or self induced amputation process it can go for and then from a single fragment it can regenerate its part so part of regeneration is found among the echinoderms